Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Tom. I am an Open University student studying computing and IT. Today's video, I'm going to be talking about what is an EMA. First of all, if you have not seen my video on what a TMA is, I advise you to watch that because they are heavily linked and I will be referring to TMAs throughout this video. So if you're not really sure what a TMA is, um, the link will be in the description or it might be up there if I remember. <laughs> Probably won't remember. But if I remember, it'll be up there. Um, otherwise, yeah, check in the description. It should be there. It just goes over what a TMA is. Like I say, I'll be referring that to a lot in this video. An EMA stands for End of Module Assessment. It is an alternative to an exam. So everyone knows what an exam is. In every module of Open University, you either have an exam or an EMA. You never have both. Um, like I say, it's a complete alternative. It is more coursework based. Um, it is it's kind of like a TMA but on steroids so whereas a TMA it only um, the information that you go through a TMA is what you've studied recently in that block of mod block of units usually um, an EMA can either question you on what has just what you just studied so like the last block if you've got four blocks in like a module typically the fourth block would be the EMA block or uh, more commonly I think um, an EMA will quiz you on the entire module on a whole like an exam would um, so you would have different sections in an EMA for different blocks so if you have three blocks three all three blocks might be different topics might be all linked it will cover the entire module in different um, for different questions um, so if it is questioning you on the entire module because of that and because it's a much chunkier version of a TMA uh, and it's worth a lot more percentage wise it would be worth 50% of your overall grade as an exam would um, your TMAs and ICMAs usually take up like 50% and they're, they're um, referred to as your continuous assessment so as you take them throughout the year you get constantly graded on them um, and then your exam or your EMA would theoretically take the second 50% so as well as much as you can do really well in your TMAs you need to absolutely boss your EMA or exam so EMA is just as important as an exam just because you've got an EMA doesn't mean it's going to be any easier for you to do um, it is handy in the sense that you can obviously look back you, you know you're not in a timed place you haven't got just three hours completely to get it done um, but it is a lot harder, they tend to throw like, trickier questions out at you or you know what I'm saying um, it can be easy because you've got all your notes and stuff, you've got the obviously computer, you've got the internet got all of the open university resources at your hand um, whereas an exam you haven't obviously but my point is that because it's so because it's such a chunky thing they advise you to take three times as long on it as you would a TMA so I believe TMA they say at least from the first year anyway got told to spend like two weeks on the TMA um, as you continue through your modules you realize that they tend to give you the TMA like as soon as you start the block so you can work on the TMA alongside the, the coursework but for an EMA they advise like six weeks to spend on your EMA um, like I say that's because a it's worth more so you need to make sure you get it done properly gives you a lot of time to ask tutors for any questions or any pointers um, and forums and stuff and also because it's they tend to cover more more of the module typically like I say not all modules are like that some modules can just look at what you've studied recently some modules will cover everything um, but because they do it they do cover everything or they cover the most recent stuff in more detail tends to take a bit longer. If your module um, has a day of school, from my experience of a module that had a day of school, the day of school impacted the EMA quite greatly. Um, now if you don't know, if you do have a day of school and you want to know kind of what it's like, obviously it depends on what module you have, I did do a video on what my day of school was like, um, so I'll link that in the description as well if you want to watch it. But on my day of school I had set of activities to do and a an assessment there 
and all together through the um, activities and assessment that effectively took up 50% of my EMA in terms of marks. So my EMA, I think the other the other part of that EMA was just two questions. Um, they took in detail for those questions. It weren't just like, what is this? Two sentences, done. It wasn't that. Um, you had to go into detail, obviously. But the day school did take a big impact on it. So, which is a good thing and a bad thing because if you absolutely botch your day school, you know, you pretty much already passed your EMA before you even started it. Um, whereas, obviously, if you struggled on your day school, you know, you just had a bad day or you just, just didn't get what was going on, then you really need to bosh your second half of the EMA to be able to pick up the marks. Um, but yeah, like I say, day schools can have an impact. Maybe not all day schools do have an impact on the EMA. Um, like I said, I'm just going off what my module was like and how that happened. The day school happened in April, I think. And then I had a EMA due in May. And like I said, that took up 50% of it. So if you've got a day school, make sure you do them. You do the day school as best as you can and prepare for it well in advance of going. There is some other different differences from an EMA to a TMA. An EMA, you strictly have no extensions on it. So for a TMA, although it's probably not advised, if you if something does pop up um, or you're just really struggling and you need an extra few days, an extra week maybe, to get it done, if you ask your tutor in advance and stuff, the chances are they probably will say yes. They might not always say yes. Um, but from what I've heard on the forums and stuff, like people do get extensions fairly regularly. Obviously, if you do an extension every TMA, they probably would get annoyed and probably deny you. However, an EMA has an absolutely strict deadline. Again, another reason why you spend six weeks on it to make sure you get it done well in advance. But yeah, no extensions. Um, if something pops up, you just got to send in what you've done and hope for the best, really. Um, it's kind of, you know, it kind of can be kind of disheartening if something does crop up completely out of the blue and then you know you either have to rush the EMA and send it in or just send in what you've got I understand that but again Open University probably would just say well we told you about the EMA like two three months ago you know why you're doing the last minute so if you're like someone like me who tends to do all assessments last minute um, try to do your EMA or at least start it as soon as possible um, just yeah because there's no extensions no matter what uh, another difference is your TMA would be marked by your tutor um, and they will send you like the marked copy back and you can look at it and they'll make some comments on what you did good what you did bad um, how you can improve etc um, EMAs they are not marked by your tutor they'll be marked by a random other tutor that isn't your personal tutor and you also don't receive it back you just on your dashboard it'll just tell you your mark you got um, that's that. <laughs> you don't get, you don't receive the amount of copy back. You don't get any comments about what you did well, what you did poorly. Um, in the exact same sense, for an exam, for example, you wouldn't get one. You wouldn't receive that exam back, a marked copy, and you know, oh, you did this well, but you didn't do that well. You can prove with this next time. You don't get that. And you don't get that with the EMAs. It's um, once you hand it in, that's it. It's just sit and wait, kind of. So again can be a little bit annoying because maybe you, you took it in thinking oh I've got 70 marks easy and then you get back and you've got like 62 and you're like how did I drop those 8 marks what happened um, sadly I, I don't know if you get in touch with your tutor I don't know if they can find out because um, like I said they didn't mark it so I don't know how much of an access they have to other people's markings but um, you know sadly you don't get it back you'd have to ask them maybe you can send them a copy and maybe they would mark it if they're feeling very generous, but I'm sure at the end of the year, they are very busy with marking everyone else's EMAs. So. so then a quick rundown on what an EMA is right at the end, just to go over everything they get. EMA is an alternative to an exam. You will not have both. Um, it is a TMA on steroids. The good advice to get it started as soon as you finish your last TMA on the day and just have a look at your EMA and get a good start on it. There are strictly no extensions. Um, your tutor won't give you a math copy back. You won't receive one. So just try your best, the best you possibly can. Um, if you've got a day school, do your day school as best you can. Obviously, it might 
make a big impact on your your EMA. If you do have a day school at the end of the year, um, maybe you can check out your EMA to see if it makes a big impact or not. Um, if you're really struggling, uh, go on forums, ask your tutor as soon as possible. Um, just again, you won't be getting an extension no matter what. Um, EMAs might cover the entire module, they might just cover your most recent part. It just completely depends. If you've got a module that covers like three separate, completely separate topics, that like one of my first year modules did, it did like robotics and um, networking and something else. I can't remember what it was now. But it did three different topics. Um, chances are your EMA is going to cover all three topics because they're so different. Whether it's your module is more of a standard module of it's got one topic and you just start off with the beginning stuff and then you go a bit deeper and a bit deeper and get a bit more knowledge. Chances are it's just going to quiz you on your more recent stuff because it's all linked together anyway. Um, that's your best way of trying to guess before you can see EMA whether or not it'll be based on your most recent stuff or all topics. That's about it. I think I've covered it as much as well. You get your... Um, get your result back like July time I think um, I don't think it was August I think it was before July maybe I'm not sure anyway long before you long before the deadline of hit next year or something so um, you don't have to wait too long uh, most EMAs are due in either end of May or the very beginning of June um, in the same time where you would do an exam um, so you get a couple of months of sitting around worrying, I'm afraid, but that happens. Um, anyway, I think that's everything. Uh, I'm just checking my notes now. I think so. So if you enjoyed that video, um, give it a like, please subscribe and comment below if you want to do any videos on anything else. If there's something in particular you want to do a video on, maybe you want me to walk through the Open University website a bit more. I've shown it a little bit. Um, I don't know, maybe I can give you an example of what material is like, what study material is like, how you would, how you use the Open University to study, I don't know. Like those are ideas, but I don't know if anyone actually wants to watch that, whether it's going to be helpful at all. Um, so yeah, if you've got any comments for, well, any ideas for any videos you want me to do, or just got questions in general, um, comment below or follow me on social media and DM me on them. Um, I'm kind of slow at replying, but I do reply eventually, I promise. It's just, I don't know sometimes I miss them but anyway yeah all links in the description um, and thank you again for watching and I hope it was helpful in a bit